Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to change your rear springs on your car to either just replace them or to put lowered springs in them like I'm going to be doing. So, yeah. What you're going to need is your spring. I'm replacing it with a lower spring, so I'm using a uh, King Spring KHRL-46SL. Or if you're just replacing it with a standard one, just yeah, make sure you have the spring or you're not going to be fucking putting a new spring in it. But... What you're going to need is uh, a socket set. I've got two because mine don't range far enough down. So I've got a uh, one and a half inch that ranges from like 24 to I believe to, I think it's 14. And then I have a 3 8 set that ranges I think from like 14 down to, I think it's nine millimeters. Um, I've got my two ratchets that I need because one's a one and a half inch and then one's a three eight inch and then i've also got a breaker bar if you don't have a breaker bar you can just get a pipe to slide over your wrenches just if you can get enough clearance underneath the car you're also going to need two spanners one's a 13 millimeter spanner and another is a 24 millimeter spanner for the spring compressors because you uh, you won't have enough room to get a sock or anything in there so i've just got that spanner and then a 13 for the part you'll see in the video uh, later. Next what you're going to need is your spring compressors. You want to use these to compress the spring. Obviously it's just safer and then using zip ties like other people have used. So I just recommend getting a set. The next two items you're going to need is a rubber mallet. It helps just to bash uh, one of the parts back in. Uh, it's better to use a rubber mallet because you don't dent it. And then this scissor jack that comes with the car is pretty good because you can wedge it between the body and the, I think it's the lower control arm uh, of the CV joint that you can uh, pry it down to get the spring fully out because it's, even though it's dangerous, I need to do it anyway, so. The next two things you're gonna need are your trolley jack, as that's to just jacking up the car not to hold it up and it's dangerous because they just hit the back head and fail. Then your jack stands to rest the car on as it's a lot safer to do so and they're rated for more. And then I also just recommend having a rag to put underneath the diff so it's not metal on metal scratching. It just helps protect the diff a bit more than just having metal on metal. And then, yeah. Now, before you start jacking the back of the car, you just want to chuck your wheel stopper on both front tyres. One there and one on the other side. Now, just grab your jack stand and place them on either side of the car because I'm going to be jacking up from the diff. And then you can slide these under once they're high enough yeah so now just place the jack under the diff and you can just start jacking there's not much clearance here so you can go slowly because of the fuel tank the lever for mine i'll just cut back to it once it's on the air and there and then in the on the jack stands for safety because you never want to hold the car by the jack because that's just the Lift it up and then you have to rest it on Jackson's unless you want to die. That's up to you, whatever you want to do then. Now that you've jacked up your car from the diff, you can chuck your Jackson's under. And I've used these jacking points, like these things, and I just put the them over the bolt type of thing. I've turned that on both sides and then just lowered it onto it. And then once you've got that, you just want to grab the car here, give it a shake. The car doesn't move, doesn't fall off then it's safety, yeah, start working on it. Now what you want to do is just crank your lug nuts to take the wheel off. I'm just going to use a breaker bar because it's easier or you could use that little crowbar that it comes with the car. Just Now that they're cracked, you just want to undo them.
visor. We're ready to start undoing the strut and getting ready to take the spring out. So now we're gonna undo the strut bolt at the bottom right here. So if you can't find it, there we just look for the pole that's coming down from the top. Pull it all the way to the bottom and then it should be a 21 millimeter bolt. Just grab it, test it. It's gonna be on there tight, so you're gonna have to crack it really hard. If you have a breaker bar and you can fit it in here, it's better to use that if you can. If not, you're gonna have to try and do it by hand and maybe just grab like a hammer and smack it with it. Yeah, and I try and crack it. Now to crack it, you could use a hammer, you could use a breaker bar if you can get it, and I can't get the breaker bar in this. So what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna grab my, from my trolley jack, it has a detachable handle. I'm just gonna slide it over the end of this, I'll give you a better view. I'm just sliding that on. And then just gives me that better leverage because it's not as long. And then a oh, bit of a struggle. And then just coming undone. So if you can just get like a pipe that can slide over. Yeah. Or if you have an impact gun, I do, but I'm just trying to show you. You can do it just with common hand tools. being out because it's gonna it's probably a little bit longer but like yeah don't want to keep it too long now that the bolt has been undone I'm just get my hand pull that off seat it down and this will just pop out and that will drop you can even to make it easier on yourself you can jack this up but yeah didn't need to when I put it back in our wheel it's just easier to pull it out like that I can just sit here now and now we're just going to take out this, uh, I forgot what it's called, but we'll take this out. It's got a, the bolt head and then a nut on here, so you're going to need just like a socket or two wrenches. But yeah, because um, once you crack it, it's going to just spin and not undo it. So put like a socket on one side, wrench on the other, and then just undo it. Now... That we're up to this part, just grab your ratchet with a 13mm socket on it, and then also a 13mm spanner. I've got a ratcheting side as well on mine, um, so you just want to put it over on one side, and then grab your spanner, put it on the bolt head, or vice versa, it doesn't need to be set up this way. You can have them on either side, and then you're just going to crack them. It's going to spin, so you're just going to go opposite ways. a little tight under you you can even just hold your spanner there if you want and then just crack it and just go like that or I just do the same at the same time and if you have a ratcheting one I just cut back to it once it's out the bolt is now out and then just so I don't lose them I just put the nut back on it and then put it next to the strut and bolt was taken out and then yeah, so just don't lose them because if you don't find them you kind of fucked now to pop it out I usually just grab the spanner wedge it in there just pop it out and then there's another joint up there you can just bend her out slowly a little bit so she's out of the way and now we're ready to start 
compressing the spring the spring compressors. So you just want to grab your spring compressors and then fit them onto the spring where they have clearance and to be opposite of each other. So I'll cut back to it once I find a decent position because it just takes a little bit of fiddling around and don't want to keep this too long. Now that I've got my spring compressors on, I don't have enough room to get into to put like a socket because they have like a little indent. So it just like a socket wrench will just slide into it or I don't even have enough room to put a socket over it. So what I've I've got, I've just grabbed is a, because uh, these are 24 millimeters on these uh, spring compressors that I've got. So I've just gotten a 24 mil wrench and then you can just put it around it and then just tighten it. It takes a lot longer. The good thing for like, if you do the fronts is because you gotta take the whole strut out, you can actually just get to the spring with like a gun or the thing that makes it so much quicker. But since the rear is a bit more of an arsehole, I've even had to cut my spring compressor down because it was making contact too much up here. So now I've just gotta try and spring compress this. And then yeah, I'll cut back once I've tried to compress it enough and it should be able to be ready to move. So all you gotta do is just bit by bit, do it like this, get it in there, tighten over and over again, but make sure you do each side so, so if you do this side like three turns, do that side three turns back and forth because you don't want to do like uneven load on one side. So you just want to keep compressing and then yeah, and she sort of start wobbling when she's ready to come out. So I'll cut back. Been doing this for like a couple minutes now. You can see that it's starting to compress because I can tilt this back and forth. Be careful, there's dollars to explode. Compressed springs are very fucking dangerous, so you gotta be careful. So I'll just show you, I've just been doing this. And then, if I can get this hand under it, just make things a lot easy, shouldn't it? Yeah. Nice switch, and we'll go to this edge. I've compressed them quite a bit, but I don't recommend what I'm just about to do. I've gotten the physic jack out of the back of the car, put it on the, I believe it's called the CV axle, at the edge of it, just cleared the uh, ABS line, and I've wedged it between the body frame. And I'm going to do it up just to drop the arm a bit more, just to get enough clearance to pull this out, because it's just sitting on that lip waiting to come in. So... I'm just about to do. Do not recommend this. It's very fucking dangerous. Can also damage the CV axle because it's not supposed to go down this far. So, so yeah. Just enough to get that out. Now, once that's out, I uh, just undo this. Don't recommend doing it, but slowly put this down. Now, pull that out, and your spring's out, and you're ready to put the new one in. And yeah, so, but also, um, so you know, decompress these springs basically straight away. You're basically like a ticking time fucking bomb. So, like how you did them up bit by bit. So undo this a couple turns, undo that a couple turns. Now you can get the ratchet in and be easier. So, and don't forget to remove the rubber boot from the top here. Because that needs to go into your other springs. So, yeah. And I'll cut back to it once it's done. 
the spring is now off and we are ready to switch over to the new spring. So you just want to grab your, I think they're called butt stops from the old spring. And mine's got a nice dent in it or I think that's how it came. So makes it a lot easier. I just line up the top of this spring with this one. So just pop it in and then if you can see, just spin the coil till it lines up like that and now they should have these two raised parts as you can see that right here and right here but now if i just pan this up if you look up onto where that goes i'll just spin you you can see two little holes where those slot in so just gonna put it onto this other coil and then you can also just line that up as well i might just break dust off of it and then line this up with this one even though it will probably spin so that will sit like that slide that one back on you back in and yeah since um it's a lot lower spring i have a bit of wiggle room that's because I, we've got this hanging down it doesn't have the strut in and then Still don't have the other one, so I don't remember the name for it. Uh, but then, once the car's weight gets onto this, you can see just by lifting it up with my hands, it lifts it up quite a little bit. So, yeah, so that's lined up. So now we just gotta put the strut back in and uh, put whatever that fucking thing is called, the bolt and the nut back in. And then, yeah, should be able to just then once those are on, put the wheels back on, lower the car, and see how it looks. Now to put this doohickey back in. Push it. Sometimes if it gets stuck, you can just grab your mallet. Tap it. And then you just try and fit your bolt in. And if she doesn't fit, just keep readjusting. And then, yeah, it doesn't fit, so... It's gonna be easy if I can get in here nice and tight and then try and get it snug and then lined up. So I'll cut back to once I've got her back in the hole. Now that we have the bolt through, just the red, this one back on. And now get ready to just do this again. Stay on there. Now she's done it real tight. And now you're done on that bit. Now we're going to go move over to the strut. Now it's time to put the strut back in. Don't need the jack for this either. So just see the, this little line just matches up with like this on the opposite side. So you might just have to push your strut up a little bit and then just line it up and once it slots in there grab your bolt back through and then just hand thread it and then just do it up hand tight until it starts to stop and then you can grab your your socket your socket wrench Oh, if you've got a, the gun, I'd use that, but not all the way. I'd do it up by hand after it's just done in there nicely. Not the camera because it's so tight in here. And then I'll just cut from this because there's been too much fucking undoing and doing things up. So I'll just skip ahead. Now the bolt is done up, it's done up really snug, done it tight, and that's done now. So make sure you've got that back in there, and we're ready to put the wheel back on. Now all you gotta do is just put the wheels 
back on and then once you've done that do the other side stay same step i'm just not going to redo it and show you keep the video short so just exactly what we did on the other side and then once the wheel's back on we jack it back up take the jack stands out and put the car back onto the ground so i'll cut back to having the wheels on and then getting ready to jack it up and put it back on the floor the wheels are now on now to get the jack and put it under the diff again and jack it up off the jack stands pull the jack stands out and then lower the car so i'll cut to putting the jack under the diff now that you have your jack under the car i've just put it up so it's just resting on there just want to start jacking her up and i've just get the jack stands out That should be high enough. Then you want to go around and un or take out the jack stands and then lower this down very carefully. And then you don't want to be under while you're lowering it because heavy vehicle falling on someone, not really a good idea. So yeah, so just take them out and then I'll show you the car on the floor. This is a before photo as I forgot to take a video for the before and after. So I'll just show you some photos instead. So as you can see for the before photo, you can see the top of the tire for the rear and then for the after photo you can see that the top of the tire is sitting under the guard a little bit. I didn't want to go too low with this as this is my daily driver and I do just want to be able to drive it as I need and then yeah so thanks for watching and that's how you change your rear springs on a VT Commodore or if this also works for VT, VX, VY and VZ as I believe they all have the same rear suspension.